Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. Now we're out here at the beautiful Desert Willow Resort out here in Palm Desert, California, and we're playing the Firecliff course today. Wow, this place is spectacular. It's my first visit out here, so I'm playing this place blind here on vlog. Let's see how we do today. This is gonna be the back nine. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to click the button down below to subscribe. I'd love to have you here back week after week. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and tell all your friends. Hey, let's head on out to the 10th hole. Here we go. The 10th hole starts off here on the south side of the property, down next to the Mountain View course. And it's a part of a trio of par fours to start this back nine. Three of the most difficult holes on the back nine, including the most difficult one of them all right here, number 10. Bunkers down the right and left are going to protect the entire landing area off the tee. And there's a big mound here next to the second bunker, making the green blind for most of the fairway. And if you're over that mound, you're going to be faced with all kinds of humps and bumps heading on into this green that's well protected on the left and the right. Now I'm working the fade off the tee today, right down the right hand side and well over the trouble for me off the tee but I'm gonna be faced with a very awkward lie here. The ball is above my feet and a downhill lie. Really had to focus getting my weight on my left hand side to clear my hips through and hit this shot straight. Right in the middle of the green here to this front hole location. I'm just trying to feed this one down. Just want a comfy tap in par to start the back nine and maintain this score of one over par here. There's a lot of difficult holes coming up, and I'm really going to have to take my chances out here at the Firecliff course. Now, here the 11th, another difficult par 4, 450 yards back up the hill. Only a bunker down the right is going to be protecting your drive. It is a very generous landing area, as really the difficulty here is the length of the par 4. Now coming into the green, not much protection around the green either. Those two bunkers just short, set a good 30 to 50 yards short of the green, are gonna be swallowing up any second shots that can't quite get to the green. Here another smooth fade off the tee. We're heading right back into the wind here as well. So this hole is playing all of its distance today. Only 300 yards off the tee for me. That's about 15 yards short of normal. And hitting my 160 club here into a 150 yard shot. Pin high. A perfect 9 iron here to 15 feet. And what do you know, I can't roll in the birdie putt. Another comfy tap in par. More disappointing tap in par there on number 11. And we're on to the last of those par fours. The 12th here, 425 yards from the tips, is going to be a little bit more dramatic than the last two. The fairway sits elevated from the rough and the natural area over on the right, and the fairway bunker is flush with the fairway. Then this big natural waste area creeps in from the left, making the fairway snake all the way around, and you're really going to have to pick your distance properly into this elevated green as these bunkers are very deep. Now a smooth three wood for me off the tee as that native area cuts the fairway off and prevents me from hitting my driver. Lo and behold, I turned it over right into the fairway bunker. It's a perfectly manicured lie though and just a flush pitching wedge here. You're really gonna get a lot of spin off these fairway bunker shots landed on the back side of the green and didn't quite come down off the hill the way I'd like and just held up here in the rough. A little bump and run with the sand wedge. And we can't quite get it to go. Come on. Oh man. We're gonna pick that one up for par and head on down to the first par five on the back nine. 550 yards heading back into the wind for us today. You're going to be heading directly over that left hand fairway bunker off the tee. That's going to be a perfect line. Now that bunker on the right is the highest point on the hole 
So if you're anywhere on the right side of the fairway, you're going to be blocked out visually from your approach shot. Hopefully you can find some sort of a target down there as this approach fairway is a very skinny target. And as we come into the green, I mean, that's plenty of sand all the way around the green. I don't need any more than that. Five is plenty, especially consider number six is just short of it. It's a beautiful target, but boy, oh boy. You just got to get your number right. Tried to turn this drive over through the hairy palm trees here and couldn't quite get it to do so. Ended up hitting it straight down the right hand side of the fairway. And that bunker I was speaking of was blocking out my view to the green. So I just tried to sling a big two iron around the bushes the best I could. Just landed it here short of the bunker, short of the green, and had to flop up a shot right over the lip of the bunker. I was very short sighted in that location, leaving it 30 feet here past the hole. And these greens have so much undulation, you really got to play them perfectly. It's all right, though. A nice four footer for par and we're on the par 3 14th aesthetically these par threes are just stunning to play all of those hairy palm trees down in the water on the left hand side but you don't want to worry about that water it's a simple little par three 175 yards from the tips select your mid iron and just go for the center of the green now down here in the golf course, it, it is secluded from a lot of the wind. So if you hit the ball high like I do, sometimes it'll just hit a gust that you just cannot see with any of the trees or leaves around you. This ball landed a full 10 yards short of the hole, but a simple little bump and run with the sand wedge almost was able to get another chip to drop. And suddenly my confidence with the wedge was sky high and I knew I could get up and down from just about anywhere. So when I was facing this 332 yard par 415th hole, that is a drivable number. Only 310 to the front of the green means 310 to clear the bunker. And that's all we're trying to do here. Get it up close to the green and trust that wedge that's been working all day. Five yards to the right, come on. Just couldn't quite get enough bleed to get this one on the surface, but it was pin high over the green side bunker. And here's that nice chip shot. It's not quite as close as the last few, but five to six feet here for birdie. Let's roll one in. There we go. We are back to even par with three holes to go. It's time to keep the pedal to the floor. 420 yards of a par four. The 16th hole is going to be heading slightly back up the hill. Now off the tee, it's another rolling terrain, really peaking with the bunker on the right and dipping down to that bunker on the left. Now coming into the green, it's going to be elevated from where the fairway is next to the fairway bunkers and well protected all the way around it. You're going to have to choose your number precisely. And with the beautiful Santa Rosa Mountains in the background, hopefully you can get your target right and really execute in the situation. First things first, let's smoke a drive right down the middle. I was finally able to get the turnover draw and this one bounded down the fairway down here into the low part of the fairway on the left, a nice sand wedge number into the green, but this flag was protected on the front left of the green by that bunker and I was really just playing to the middle of the green here, not wanting to face any trouble. I was trying to rely on the flat stick. All right, one more par three on the day, one more long, long shot. 
It's the longest par three on the card, sitting 204 from the tips. And today we got a back hole location. It's going to be playing 210 all the way back there. But luckily, there's been a little breeze all day. You can see the trees just fluttering in the corner there. And I trusted that my 175 yard eight iron would fly all the way there. Well, I tugged it just a little bit and ultimately it did go about 200 yards. And another chip shot that I almost hold out. Just another comfy tap in par as we head on down to a par five finisher. That's our bread and butter, so we're gonna have to feast on what we see in front of us. The whole entire first half of the fairway is canted down to the left. There's a giant waste bunker covering the entire left side, and beyond the waste bunker, there's a little creek. So make sure you don't go too far left. The bunker up on the right is really perched up up on top of the hill. Now you're gonna have to come across the creek and be well aware that there is trouble lurking absolutely everywhere coming into this final green. But honestly, you probably couldn't pick a better setting. This golf course and this resort is absolutely picture perfect. We're gonna have to make sure we come back here to play the other golf course very soon. Now we're getting finished here just after the sun peaks behind the mountain, but there's another 45 minutes of light. So plenty to play golf and finish it up here. Another striped drive right down the middle, trickled down into this waste bunker and down into the bottom of it. Now I was just playing here to get over that river that cuts across the fairway, just trying to hit a smooth seven iron out there. And man, did I flush it right down the middle. A nice 77 yards, a little sawed off sand wedge to the middle of the green here and a nice 10 foot birdie putt on the last hole. Well, that's all she wrote. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you next week. Later.